Two dolls. It is Winston Wednesday, April 24th. We're going to try this one more time. Hopefully it works. This is our 600th episode, our 600th interview, our 600th video. And I pray and I hope that I am able to add Ezen back to the live. So I'm going to send him this live so that we can get right into today's show. Okay, Fashion Dolls? We're having a few tech issues here. And hopefully it should work this time. I'm praying that it works this time. I uninstalled and then I reinstalled back. So hopefully if it hopefully it works. And I guess it's because I haven't done a couple interviews this week. That's probably why it's acting up. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, we are waiting on my guests to get here. In the meantime, I want to say thank you guys so much for supporting Style by Stevie, whether it's the fashions, whether it's the amazing guests. I try to keep you guys on the current eye of what's going on in the world of fashion. And if you guys have been following my stories, you know that the Met Gala is May Monday, May 6th. Just wanted to watch you, beautiful. Love you. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you. Shout outs to Wayne the Pain and tell my girl Kendra, my sis, what's gooey? I love her. I love y'all both. So hopefully it will work this time. I'm praying that it will let me add Ezen back was the host of the K2 spot. Uh I'm I'm praying it worked. I just sent he's in an invite. Woo! Thank you. God. Got me. <laughs> okay. And you look spectacular, my love. Oh, thank you so, so much. <laughs> it is so great to have you here again. This is our third conversation, third yes. interview. It yes. is. <sighs> so we are now in the spring season. I think the second one we did was more so in the winter mm -hmm. time. So we gonna have we've got some spring icebreakers for you at the end of the interview, we'll, we'll, which we will do. Okay. But what extra has happened since our last interview? Because I know you said you was putting out music, and so yes. much has happened since then. Yes. Um. So glad came out in January. Uh, it's done very well. Very excited about it. Um, I realized that um, I definitely want to lean uh, much heavier into the pop sound uh so i have a lot more pop music to come uh, i will be releasing my ep this year this fall there i've been attending a lot of writing camps and you know really honing my skills as a songwriter and uh still still working in film you know got some things coming up that i'm set to film this year uh shush <laughs> uh, and um still going to class because no matter how far you get in your career you should always be a student uh so yeah training doesn't stop because you've achieved some amount of success so still still a student of the uh, of the craft and you know building my package and Pursuing all my dreams. <laughs> that is very, very, very important. And we talk about that all the time, about having a backup plan and something to fall back on. Because in this business, it's just like, okay, it's a one-time thing. You got the success, you got everything, but you need something to fall back on also too. So that is key and important. So let's get right into it. Now, music. What can we expect in the music? Are you saying you want to tap into the pop sound? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I really, really love the um, 1980s synth pop sound. I love that a lot. Uh, so expect a lot of that, especially with my album next year, expect a lot of that. Um, and there will, there will be a lot of love, be it romantic love or just love of self. A lot of that spread through my music. That is what my music is for for me. It's very therapeutic. It's... Um, I write a lot of love songs to myself that I feel can uh, help anybody. Uh, I, do, I do think we have to show ourselves a lot more love than what we may do on a regular basis or even what we're taught to do um, just in society. I think that uh, society has conditioned us to uh, suppress things and hold things down and just keep on trucking. Uh, but I think it's very important to rest and sit with everything that you experience. You know, if you're having uh, negative emotions, it's okay to sit with them. Don't like avoid them. 
sit with them, go through them, see why, you know, ask yourself questions about them. You know, why do I feel this way? What is, am I trying to protect myself from something? Am I, is this a reaction of fear for something? Uh, I think it's really important to just really sit with your emotions uh, because if you allow yourself to go through them from beginning to end, then they won't keep popping up <laughs> or at least they'll pop up much less frequently and you probably will be able to get through them much faster when they do pop up again. <laughs> So you talk you talk a lot about falling in love, falling out of love. What emotions you said for your upcoming album can we expect on this upcoming project? Uh, lots of love, <laughs> um, lots of love of self, um, lots of songs. Uh, especially uh, there's a ballad on the album uh, that is uh, very near and dear to, to my heart. I, it kind of had came to me out of nowhere. Usually ballads come from experiences, but, excuse me, but this one, I just, you know, I was in creative mode and I was listening to beats and then one stuck out to me and I was just like, yeah, this is it. This is, and then this really beautiful song came out of it that I'm so excited to share that it really, probably won't get a chance to experience until maybe late next year. But still, when you do, you're like, oh, man, this is worth the wait. Um, lots of, you know, upbeat, fun, dancey type of things. Um, lots of carefree, joyous things and some serious things, you know. Um, I wrote a song about, uh, I wrote a breakup song, uh, but it's a song about breaking up with your fear and not about uh, breaking up with like a person. Although it can play, it plays that way, but it's really, uh, it's, it's actual message is about breaking up with your fears and not allowing your fears to cripple you and hinder you from <clears throat> even, you know, pursuing, let alone achieving things yes. that uh, rest in your heart. And that is key and important. I'm glad that you covered self-love because a lot of people, this is the season, springtime is the season for everybody to fall in love with someone. Mm -hmm. But in order to fall in love with someone, you have to fall in love with yourself first. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you said breaking up with fear. I'm glad you touched on that because a lot of people fear certain things, whether yep. it's going into a new aspect of life, whether it's losing someone, mm -hmm. all of these things people fear in real life. So. I can't wait for you to drop this project. And Jerron Couture says that they love that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, I can't see the comments. I don't know how to see the comments. Oh. I see okay. you guys coming in. But, <laughs> but thank you very much, Jerron. Um, he says, hello, Ezen. Hi. <laughs> Now, you know where, I'm, where, where we're going with this one because we're in the category of music. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure you've seen Cowboy Carter. The new project is out. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get your thoughts because she's gotten so much backlash from going to country music genre when there have been Black country music artists out here for decades. Yeah. And we're, some of us yeah. are just now finding out about this. So what yeah. are your thoughts and on the music shift? Well, uh, first and foremost, uh, country music exists because of black people. There's that. <laughs> um, like a lot of things, uh, whether we know it or not, um, they exist because of black people. Yeah. Um, so a black person going and doing country music, whether it's something that you are used to receiving from her or not, if it strikes you as odd that that's a personal problem because she has every much right to be in that space as anybody else. And um, not to mention it's good music, <laughs> you know? Um, I think it, we can appreciate art regardless of who's putting it out uh, to some degree because, you know, some people and the things that, you know, they're about and that they do uh, consuming their art, uh, benefits them and we don't want to support anybody who's not doing um, right by humanity. Uh, so, but outside of that, you know, just black people in country music is something that has always been, whether they were allowed the spotlight or not. And what I love so much about what Beyonce has done, and I'm sure this was uh, one of her intentions with doing this, is it brought a lot of black country artists into the spotlight 
even from back in the day exactly. <laughs> into the spotlight they're charting like crazy now thanks to you know this contribution um and that's honestly that's something to aspire to to be able to use your presence and in, in your platform to uplift other people especially you know other right. fellow black people and the fact that her doing this really brought up a lot of people who are in this realm who now are receiving opportunities and getting recognition that they've always deserved so i'm here for it i love it <laughs> the same here it's a i didn't know it was that many black country artists now out currently so many black writers that are on this project that she has and it has now brought everything to the forefront yes. because what was hidden back then is now out in the public mm -hmm. to our eyes. Mm -hmm. And we're just like, you know about Mickey Guy, you know about all of these other black yeah. country artists that are coming out and saying, okay, hey, I'm here to representation. Mm -hmm. And Smokey mm -hmm. Robinson was asked the same question too. What does he think about the new project? She can do whatever music genre she wants to. Any black artist, we are the innovators and the creators. Yes of every music genre from hip-hop to jazz mm -hmm. to country mm -hmm. to rock and roll yep. blues yep. we are the makers of this music mm -hmm. the originators of this music yep. and for them to try to whitewash it and erase it from history by not playing her music in certain radio stations right not saying that oh she's an artist period yeah no matter what genre of music she's in she's an right. artist period and people have to come to realize that so if you don't like the project, that's on you. But I think it's a masterpiece. There's a couple on there that I love mm -hmm. that are my favorite on this project that she's released. Mm -hmm. And for you to do pop and say, hey, pop, when we see pop, we think Christine Aguilera. Mm -hmm. We think Britney Spears. We think NSYNC. Mm -hmm. But they are black pop artists. Yeah. What about Christina Milian? Yeah. Christina Milian can do any. And I feel like she's hey. underrated. She doesn't even get her yeah. just yeah. She can do R&B. She can do pop, either mm -hmm. genre. Um, the one thing Prince was keen about was not putting an artist in a box and labeling yeah. them as one specific thing. He right. let them go in their own lane. And even under his management, when he started mm -hmm. his record label, Prince, rest his soul, he was yeah. keen about, about not labeling artists or being labeled or confined to any mm -hmm. music mm -hmm. genre. He did what he wanted to do at yeah. his own risk. Yeah. 100%. I don't uh have any expectation that um i will be barred down to pop music for the entirety of my career i definitely and i love to first of all just you know genre bend and blend pop with other uh genres i love r and b pop oh, yeah. you know and other types of you know contemporary things like that um but no like i write songs songs because I, I love writing songs I love telling stories and just because I am writing a lot of pop music doesn't mean that some other genre related music isn't coming out of me as well you know and you and that's something that you'll see on the EP and the album um, it's not gonna be it's not just straight pop it probably will be majority pop but not straight pop from beginning to end you know there will be R&B uh, I'm a young black man I grew up on R&B music, <laughs> so R&B music is a very big influence on me artistically. So absolutely, there will be R&B, there will be neo soul. I love neo soul music. I love the ethereal, otherworldly essence of neo soul music, and that is a very big part of my inspiration as well. And I incorporate all those things, even just in a pop song. <laughs> so absolutely. And I love how how you blend your music you, you blend all of these different genres and that's what it is you're not being labeled and mm -hmm. that's what a lot of artists are they don't like to, to be labeled I'm, I'm this is my artistry this is my medicine i'm ministering to you the listeners mm -hmm. listen to me and listen to what i'm saying in my music yeah. don't worry about what genre it is and that's what people yeah. need to stay focused on. Mm -hmm. and that's what was one of my mantras this morning which is to remain focused yeah so don't lose sight of the message or worry about mm -hmm. the music but listen to the message in the music and that is what is important so i hope a lot of artists can yeah. resonate with that because that is a thing they're just like oh they put me in this box mm -hmm. and i don't like being labeled but yeah. let artists do whatever genre of music they feel free to yeah 
that can be a challenge uh, within in and of itself, just um, with a lot of record labels, uh, especially if they function oh, yeah. in this old school, um, you know, we create this whole entire persona for you and then you go out there and you uh, showcase that. And that's how you become a star instead of allowing people to do art. And you can see that in a lot of artists who have like been at, in the game for a long time and they, you know, had this particular sound in the beginning and then all of a sudden things like change drastically. Oh yeah. Uh, a lot of the times it's because they're finally free from uh, being forced to present a specific image and now they're uh, able to do the art that they want to do. And it's almost like, learning the artistry all over again because now you're like back into discovering okay so who am i as an artist outside of what i was told i had to be and that like when people, you know people have those like transitions uh in their career and then people are like what what is this music they're putting out these days <laughs> it it's yeah that's that transitional period where they're finally able to actually spend time and discover themselves as uh their, their true selves as an artist and then, um, you know, when that transition is over and they've gotten to the other side of it, it's like, oh man, like iconic music <laughs> at this point. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's really tough. I'm very grateful that um, that is not the situation that I am in, uh, that I uh, am a part of all the decisions that are made with, uh, with myself uh, as an artist. And I'm very grateful for that. And our guest Friday, Stephen Voice, that was something that we touched on when we did our very first interview as well, too. It was mm -hmm. like, he's an independent artist, you're an independent artist. And I love that you gentlemen both collectively have an input to say, okay, hey, I won't do this. I won't do this. This is mm -hmm. what I want to do. This is the yeah. same music I want to try. This is yeah. what I want to try for this single, for this, or for this particular album. Mm -hmm. One thing that he said when we did our interview is... Um, a lot of record labels, some of them didn't know what to do with him, mm -hmm. or people were just confused on the side, like, okay, yeah. what? that's a thing that even some of the greats have yeah. had. Whitney Houston was one of them. They was like, okay, she's too pop. She Is she ever going to cross over to the mm -hmm. R&B? And then mm -hmm. years and years to come, we've seen different albums. Yeah. If you listen carefully, yeah. you see it. But that happens to a lot of Black artists, especially mm -hmm. if you were trying to cross over and market to the R and B side. Mm -hmm. That is a problem. Yeah. Yeah. And R and B just doesn't get what it deserves um within the music industry uh mm -hmm. as a whole. And it's really hard to like break out as an R and B artist. Um yes you can you know gain notoriety and get um you know grow a large fan base, but to like break out, uh it's really hard to do that in the R and B space. And um, that has no uh, impact on why I'm pushing pop music because I'm still going to be putting out R&B music. But um, just acknowledging that that is a reality that um, R&B doesn't get what it deserves. R&B does not get what it deserves. And uh, I think if it got what it deserved, a lot more people would be uh, pushing out a lot, a lot of more uh, authentic R&B music. But Absolutely. I'm sure that'll change someday. <laughs> it's coming. It is definitely coming. So you've got music under the belt. Mm -hmm. Acting. What, what can we expect? Because I know you can't say certain things on this project, but just give us a little bit of what we can expect as far as acting as So when it comes to you know the film world, a lot of times we film things years before they come out. <laughs> So, but, and then there are times where I film something and then a month later it's on the network. <laughs> so uh, I guess it just depends on the project, but um, there is a series uh, in development uh, where I will be in quite a few episodes. There is a film that I will make an appearance in and that's, that's it right now that I can think of. Yeah. That's it for right now. But yeah, that's uh, that's what I got going on. <laughs> I think there will be, um, I'll be part of a showcase this summer. Uh, so 
Look out for that soon. But yes. <laughs> All right, so we got to stay tuned. And it is Coachella season, I think mm -hmm. it's what, week two of Coachella? So Coachella is going on. Yes. So a lot of performances, a lot of summer performances. Look forward mm -hmm. to that. You're going to be in the series, this film. So I'm looking forward to seeing you on the screen as well, too. Now, uh, the last question, because I'm going to keep pressing you about it. This hair <laughs> I already know what this is. <laughs> it is still in its developmental stage um it is not easy <laughs> to do this uh but I, it's still in development i have not like put it down i've not given up on it um testing is still going really well the people love it who are using it so i'm really excited about that um actually just got my hair uh silk pressed a couple of months ago um for a trend because it's been it had been a long time i had to get two inches of hair cut off uh but it didn't really bother me really because there was still a ton of hair left <laughs> uh but you know it was really cool just to see uh the stark difference from um the last time i had got my hair straightened which was a year prior to now and just like knowing that yeah you know i think i know what i'm doing with this thing here so i gotta get this out <laughs> The people at some point. They're, but but no, it's still it. the development. My ass. They're waiting <laughs> on it. So okay. okay. Do you see yourself expanding with this line, with this particular line with your with your own products? Do you see yourself expanding with more than just the hair oil? Yes. Um I do want uh I aspire to uh have a full, you know, natural hair care line. Um but I have to be very, uh, there'll be a lot of planning around uh, that because at no point do I want to mass produce uh, any products because in order to mass produce products, it requires a lot of unethical practices. Um, and so I would rather just do like batches and sell batches and then you got to catch it on the next batch, <laughs> uh, which would probably be very hard to do. Um, because as it you know as it grows in popularity more and more people will want it uh but i definitely don't i have no desire to like have my product made in a factory and shipped all around the world uh with a bunch of fillers and things that are required uh by law to be put in to main, uh, maintain shelf life and this that and all those yeah. things um i would rather produce small smaller quantities that can be managed and shipped out sparingly I, I one of the things i would likely do is open a storefront and that'll probably be like the main you know house operations where the product can get put out but it it'll be controlled from you know that store and maybe uh, other stores in a few other areas as a way of helping to get it out to more people but definitely won't be putting anything in the factory <laughs> no and I love that you're doing it on your own. You know what exactly what scents or essentials you want to go into your oil. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of people that manufacture hair products. Yeah. And you're seeing this being pumped into the jars, shipped off, and then you they got distributed to the stores and everything. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that goes into it yeah. when it comes to building a hair care product. Line. Yeah. So that's why I had to ask because yeah. your oil is popular and people love it. <laughs> yeah. It and even with that, it's uh, it's kind of scary because, you know, when you do start to mass produce a product, there are a lot of people who, um, uh, black people who, you know, created this amazing product and then a company uh, came to them like, hey, I'm going to give you this amount of money to own your product. And then um, if they say yes, then boom. Um, now this company owns the product, the rights, and then they start putting the things into it yeah. that shouldn't be in it, ruining the entire product. The quality of the product is diminished greatly, and you're not getting the same results, or worse, it you're getting uh, an adverse reaction when prior to this change in the formula, this product was everything that you needed. And I, I don't want that either. I don't want that either. <laughs> so... No, I don't I, It wouldn't matter. I wouldn't sell out. I don't care how much money is offered to me. I wouldn't sell out because I would not feel good about 
sacrificing the integrity and the quality of my product for a quick dollar. I'd rather play the long game. <laughs> and I totally agree. Because it's mine, I patented it, I created mm -hmm. this product, I know exactly what I wanted to get put into mm -hmm. it. And like my brother in the comments said, K2, she said it's a lot of work. It is. Yeah. Owning a hair care brand and business, and then you got competition. Yeah. That's another thing. Because mm -hmm. there are so many other hair care brands out mm -hmm. here. You go mm -hmm. into an alley, any beauty supply mm -hmm. store, and it's just like, where do I begin? I don't yep. know where to begin because there's so many brands. They offer this, and mm -hmm. they have this in it, and this is hair been free, and this yep. is this. So it's a lot. It's going to be scarce competition yeah. as it pertains to owning a hair care company. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It's probably I probably won't um, go like completely public with it for a while, just to uh, spend time getting my face out, getting an audience, and then presenting the product to the to my audience. Like, hey, I do this thing, uh, and you should get into it. Uh, I think that'd be the best way to go about it instead of just like throwing it out there while nobody knows who I am. <laughs> well. Many people know who I am, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. All right, Fashion Dolls. We covered the acting, we covered the music, and we've covered the hair care. You guys is questioning. All right, Fashion Dolls, are y'all ready? So we are going to get into our spring icebreakers. It is officially spring season, Fashion Dolls. And we are going to be getting into some spring icebreakers here with E Zen. And you guys can ask some questions as well to Fashion Dolls. So you guys at home that are viewing, this is our 600th interview. You guys, thank y'all so, so, so much. And I'm so honored to be doing it here with E-Zen because we kicked off this season, I think, with E-Zen also too, January 2nd. Yeah. So it was pretty, yeah, January 2nd, we kicked off this season and now we are doing our 600th interview, our third interview. So I'm excited. All right, fashion dolls, are y'all ready to get into these spring icebreakers? All right, here we go. What are you looking forward to this spring season? Freedom. Freedom. Mm. I, I, my mission in life is to enjoy the hell out of my life for as long as I have life. And as a part of that, just uh, freedom to just be. Um, I really like spending time away from everybody. And so every opportunity that I have to do that, I take full advantage of it. Uh, I don't need to, you know, I'm not a nightlife person really. Um, I really only go out if I'm invited out and I have the mental capacity to be out. <laughs> but um, a good day for me, a good time for me is Bob's Burgers and a glass of wine. So <laughs> I'm just, I'm looking forward to uh, being able to maintain the freedom to do that while still actively uh, working on everything that I'm working on. Just, you know, finding my space to rest and to be. What temperature does it have to be before you ditch the winter coat? I'm very hot natured, so not, not that warm. <laughs> like maybe like mid 60s, if I'm not going to be out all day, like I'm just like, oh, let me go to the store real quick. I will skip the jacket. <laughs> I will skip the jacket. Yeah, I am very hot natured. I get hot very easily. And if I overheat, I sweat very badly. So I'm like, yeah, let me let me stick my arm out. OK, there's no breeze. It's 65, but there's no breeze. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Do you have a green thumb? If so, what is your specialty in growing in your garden? I don't know yet, but it's something that uh, I intend to explore. Uh, I definitely want to homestead. Um, homesteading probably won't be something that happens until I make my purchase. But um, I have been looking at like raised beds to start some, you know, little small plants in um, in my backyard area. You know, maybe some herbs and some peppers or something like that. Something that um, isn't going to take up a lot of space. So uh, I'll have to get back to you on that and we'll see if I have a green thumb or not. <laughs> okay, I know there's going to be a lot of these going on. You're having a picnic. What are your top three food essentials that are in your best? Food essentials? Mm-hmm. Fruit. Um, 
um, some sort of uh, sour gummy, like uh, my favorite candy is sour sketty. Uh, fun fact, it's also uh, vegan unintentionally. So anybody who's vegan, you can eat sour sketty. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a horrible candy. Um, and wine, red wine for me, the drier the better. What's your favorite place to have a spring picnic? Ooh. So the best place I've picnicked so far has to be Piedmont Park in Atlanta. Uh, oh. And a close second would be, um, uh, uh, what is it? The lake at Peachtree or something like that. It's in Peachtree City. Uh, it's a beautiful lake. And, you know, it's like shoreline. It's a great place to go and like hang out, catch a breeze in a hot day because there's the water there. And you can fish if you want and swim or boat or whatever. Or you can just sit outside and, you know, there are people who do yoga. It's really cute. And um, it's much smaller than Piedmont Park, but um, it's also a really beautiful place. What is your favorite flower or plant? Ooh, that's tough. My favorite flower or plant. I'm going to say my favorite flower is lavender, just because I love the smell of lavender. Frank. So, yeah, I, lavender smells so beautiful to me. And it's also a natural sedative, so it's great if you, to help you sleep. You know, put some lavender essential oil on your pillow or, you know, uh, heat it in a, in a diffuser or something like that. It'll help you knock you right on out. So lavender, definitely. If you could go on spring break vacation, would you go with friends or family? Spring break, friends. Including like my older brother. But oh. <laughs> yeah, but like a, with family, it would just have to be like, oh, we're a family vacation. But if I'm going on spring break, I want to go with friends. <laughs> yeah. Your favorite spring holiday? My birthday. <laughs> All right. Your favorite flower smell? Favorite flower smell? Mm -hmm. Lavender again. Mm -hmm. Lavender okay. again. All right, fashion dolls, icebreakers, you guys are chiming in. If you could have your ultimate spring break, ultimate spring break vacation, what are your top, who are the top five people you would bring with you? Um, okay. I would bring my best friends. That's three. And my, my friends, Tyler and Tyler. Okay. That's five. Okay. Yeah, that's five. <laughs> if you could have spring break by yourself with books, what are your top five books? What would be your pick? Mm -hmm. You know what? I don't have any like book series that I'm like so in love with, but uh, genre wise, anything fantasy, anything supernatural. I love the magic and like I have a very vivid imagination. So I, I love reading books that like really paint these like phantasmal pictures. So definitely anything fantasy and um, a fantasy coloring book. Okay, I, I, I do the adult coloring. Book. <laughs> they're, they're so relaxing. There's something about it. Okay, do you decorate or arrange your house differently in the spring? I know I do. I'm always rearranging something. I just can't be still. It's got to be something new. <laughs> um, I don't know yet. Um, I, I'm still furnishing my house because I just moved here a few months ago. So uh, I don't know if I'll ever rearrange anything. I guess I'll just have to see once, once like I have everything and everything is in its place and everything's where it's supposed to be. Uh, then I'll know like, you know, maybe I like this over here now, things like that. So I like to think possibly. I know it's something my mother uh, does a lot, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's something that I pick up just 
from her example. <laughs> from the habits. I, I yeah. Know I <laughs> okay. Your go-to spring color to bust out from your wardrobe. Purples. Like pastel purples. I think it looks so nice on my skin. That is my <laughs> color of this season. Purple yes. and blue. And you guys know that I've been obsessed with all things purple. So purple definitely. Now, we're asking cleaning questions. Okay. All right. What is your go-to album to have on full blast while you spring clean? There is no album, but I have a playlist titled Current Faves. And it's just like whatever songs that I can listen to over and over again without like starting to hate it. And yeah, I rotate songs. If a song starts to get annoying, I'll put it out and replace it. Um, and there are songs by mostly women artists because women are the world. <laughs> um, like there are songs by Sarah Bareilles in there, India Ari, um, Flo, if you if anybody's familiar with the new uh, R&B girl group Flo from London. Um, there's Little Mix, there's Chloe, there's Willow Smith. There's like, it's a lot of like, just fun, fun music. And then very like, give you the feels music. And I just like to like shuffle that and just let it go. And I literally sing every single song <laughs> the whole time. I do that when I clean, when I shower, anytime I'm like, you know, prepping to go outside or whatever, like I turn on the speaker, I turn on that playlist. And then when I get in the car, I continue playing the playlist <laughs> or wherever I'm going. All right, fashion dolls. And that is our spring ice breakers. Do we have any questions for Eza? And always a great time chatting yes. with you. I had such a great time. So before we let you go, what are some gems that you would like people to take away going into the new spring season now? We'll be going into the summer before you know it. So what are some gems that you would like to give to the viewers on embracing this new weather change? Because it's been so cold. When we did our second interview, it was in the winter time, mm -hmm. fall, winter. Yeah. Um, I will say this. Um, there's a song on my EP coming out this fall titled Don't Wait For Me. And that song is about standing firm in who you are and being exactly who you are unapologetically. And there are people who won't like that, who want you to be a certain way. And you, I, that song is to tell those people, don't wait for me. Do not wait for me to uh, be what you think I should be because I'm going to continue to be exactly what I think I should be. I'm standing firm with that. I'm owning that. I'm not sorry about it. I understand that that may have a negative impact on you. And I accept that. And I accept whatever you choose to do as a result. So tell these people, don't wait for you. Make your way at your own pace. Okay. And and just, yeah, tell them to wait for you. And we got a question from my brother, Kate Tucci. He said, who's your dream collaboration music wise? Uh, that is such a hard question to answer because there are so many. Um, uh, I'm just going to like list a few people. <laughs> and this in no way is like the list in all. Um, I would love to collab with Gallant. I think that that man is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, he makes like beautiful music and he's so creative vocally. And I just think that we would sound really good on a song together, like really good on a song together. Um, Victoria Monet. I think when, it, when she does a lot of like old school sounds, I think if we, we hit one of those old school type songs, I think we would kill that. Um, Leanne from Little Mix, Chloe and Hallie, especially both, both of them together, like a Chloe and Hallie collab, and not just like a Chloe collab and a Hallie collab, oh, but a yeah. Chloe and Hallie collab. Huh? Oh my gosh! Um, 
the, the list goes on. It goes on. I love so many different people. Sarah, I have to say, shout Sarah Bareilles out as well because Sarah and India Ari, they are very, very uh, big influences on me as a writer. And um, even, um, sorry if you heard my dog barking, I'm assuming she saw somebody walk by. <laughs> um, that, but they're very big influences on me as an artist. Uh, I love the way that they tell like these most beautiful stories with these wonderful metaphors and things like that. And I aspire to be able to tell my stories uh, in a similar fashion. So yeah, all them and more. <laughs> Fashion Dolls, any more questions before we conclude and wrap up this amazing interview and conversation? 600. This is my 600. That is insane. Dolls. I love that so much. <laughs> yes, all the hard work, all the perseverance, my dedication, the love, the support, everything you guys have given to me. Again, I can't thank you all enough. We started off this season with Ezen, January 2nd, and now we are concluding, continuing on because we're not saying concluding it's more amazing guests that are going to be coming on and we are officially booked all the way up until july so we've got more amazing guests coming on so you guys thank y'all so much for your love your unconditional support for tuning in every day monday through friday to see whoever hi diamond you got gotta catch us on the replay my love this one is going up it is going on my channel as well too and i will have it saved here on the gram so before we close out today's interview, I'm going to tie into what Ezen just said, and that is be unapologetic and be authentically who you are. Today's final thought comes from Maggie Smith, and she says, speak your mind, even if your voice shakes. Sometimes speaking up and standing up for yourself and being bold, you can lose people. I'm at a point in my life where I've learned that as it pertains to speaking the truth, if you lose people, because you are standing up for what is right, I'm not afraid. And we have to continue to adapt that same mindset as it pertains to life. In any career field, in any part of your life, tell you guys a quick story before we wrap up. So me and my mom went into Walmart and there's this store clerk there, this associate, and her and my mom was going back and forth. And me being the good child that I am, I did, when your mom is speaking, you know in the black house or when your mama talk, you, you let them, when they give you that look, let them talk. So <laughs> I let my mom just, her and her was going at it. And my thing is, something's got to be done. So while our other store clerks were just, you know, staying around, my mom went to another store clerk and they were saying, you know what? We had the same problem with the same particular individual. So it goes to show you that no matter, no matter how far in life you are, there's going to be someone that is going to be an obstacle in your way that doesn't want to, they're saying, oh, you're problem you're difficult you're this you're that continue to outshine the odds and that would be my advice to anybody else so that is the moral of that story and i hope you guys all took from it i've overcome so much in my life to be where i am right now my grandma named maggie street manifest your avatar absolutely manifest your greatness manifest whatever it is that you put out there in the universe mm -hmm. i predicted that this day would come i said i'm going to hit 600 interviews in 2024 Period. and just as sure as i put it out there in the universe it's happening mm -hmm. style by stevie is taking off so fast and that's because of you guys not because of me doing the work doing the interviews with the guests the gift of gab being able to talk <laughs> but because you guys tune in you guys and engage and that helps. Thank you so much for checking on me each and every day. Because there have been days I did not want to get up and do this platform. But I'm just like, I cannot let the followers and supporters down. You have a purpose and your voice needs to be heard. And I say that without saying this. Continue on and continue forth. And whatever it is that sets your soul on fire, you will never hear me stop saying it. I'm going to keep saying it. I want you guys to live life through fire. Because if it's possible for me, it's possible for somebody else. Thank you, Diamond. Thank you. I haven't really considered myself a fashion queen, but I, I'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, y'all. But, Ezen, where can everyone check you out and follow you? This was such an honor to be able to do a 600th interview with you. My third. Yeah, what an well, honor. In the beginning of this year. Where can everyone follow you? you 
You can find me on every platform except Twitter because I don't have Twitter at Ezen Essence. That's E Z E N and the word Essence all together. Um, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Threads. Yeah, that's it. Um, but yeah, that's where I am. I, I am a bit more active on TikTok than other places. Um, so if you want to see like me more frequently, TikTok is where you should find me. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Stevie, for having me once again. It's a pleasure as always. And I'm really excited for the next time. Yes, we are definitely going to bring you back for the summer. So I'm going to send you those dates. We're going to have you back for the summer so that we can get into these projects that you have coming out. And it's always a pleasure because we started off this season with you. Mm -hmm. We did our very first interview this year in the new year, 24. Yeah. And to be closing out and doing my 600th interview with you, my third one with you is amazing. So it's written in the stars. <laughs> All right fashion dolls and thank y'all all so much for tuning in to our 600th interview 600 video 600 everything you guys can subscribe and check out all of my interviews on style by stevie daytime on youtube hit that bell so you'll be notified when new interviews are uploaded this one will be uploaded and i will have it here also on igtv in case you missed it as well also too and Ezen, thank you thank you all thank so you. much for your love all right, Bye. fashion dolls. Bye. We will see you Friday with Stephen Voice. No show tomorrow, but you can catch some of the replays from this week on Style by Stevie on YouTube and here. You both are wonderful souls. Thank you, oh, brother. Thank you so much. <laughs> A big shout out to my. I wish brother. I could see the comments. <laughs> I'm reading them to you, my love. <laughs> I, I knew you were tripping because I couldn't see him at first when I added him on here. I had to uninstall and then reinstall and come back. So it was a mess, but we finally got it, and we're here. So you guys, be fabulous, be blessed, be safe, and remember, live life with passion and unapologetically on your own terms. Yes. I love you all, and you guys take care, and I will see y'all Friday with Stephen Voice. No show tomorrow, but catch up all throughout the week on the previous episodes on Style by Stevie on YouTube. Hit that bell so you'll be notified. And you can check them out here on the Graham IGTV. And I'll have that information posted for y'all, all right? So we will see y'all Friday, Fashion Dolls. Y'all take care. Bye.